doesn't have the brass knuckles in his gloves that Gotti apparently carries around. Those are heavy hands. And speaking of heavy hands, we are finally getting ready now for our main event. Heavyweight title fight between Lennox Lewis, the title holder, Andrew Galata, the challenger. Will this fight elevate the heavyweight division or create yet another repulsive stain? I don't know if Galata has the stuff to be a champion, Jim, but I'll go out on a twig and say that if he can take a punch, we're going to have some fun tonight. fight a bump. He's fighting out right now. Another low blow. This is a bad one. And Wade oh, Kelly is going to have to give Mo a time out. Hi. And it's hey. terrible for Galata because he's been in control of the fight. Galata is flirting with disqualification here in a fight that he seems to be winning big. That was another low blow. Down goes That's it. That's, That's, it. It. That's, That's it. Great. It's a disqualification. That's and now there's a fight in the ring. Somebody's going to get hurt in there. what to do is McCall occasionally looks away from him and invites him to attack. This is a bizarre scene. There's something wrong with Oliver McCall. He doesn't really want to fight. He's crying in his corner. I've never seen anything like this. He's overwhelmed with some sort of emotion. Lewis doing what he has to do. You wonder how much longer Mills Lane will allow this to go on. And that's, that's going to be it. With a whimper, not a bang. Lennox Lewis has just become the WBC World Heavyweight Champion for the second time in his career. Hard power punches from Galata. Bo goes down. Second time in his career that Bo has been down and he's wobbling badly. And Galata looks as calm as an assassin. A fighter who simply cannot stop himself from throwing low blows. Hard shot by Galata. Bo is wasted again. That's a knockdown. Low blows, and down goes Bo again. He's calling the fight over. He's disqualified Galata again. Let's get it on! saying to Uncle Wendy, you're here to fight, not to hug. You and Kelly, you need to fight, or I'm going to chase you. You can do better than that, you understand? And Uncle Wendy is flirting with disqualification danger. It's the end of the fight. We've had another disqualification. Yep. Jim. That's the fourth major disqualification in the heavyweight division in 366 days. And Lewis is once again denied the spectacular knockout that he thinks he needs to galvanize public opinion in his favor. Galvanizing the public's attention is what Lennox Lewis has been trying to do ever since he first won a heavyweight title five years ago. But when opponents quit against you and the other stars of the division aren't really interested in fighting you, respect can be an elusive goal. Enter Andrew Galata, a fighter with no problem attracting attention, but a major problem fighting within the rules. No one can deny his talent, but his reprehensible tactics have made him the most notorious, many say the dirtiest, fighter in the world. Together, you have an intriguing matchup between two fighters with a rare opportunity to change their public images. A lot of people look at Galata and say that he's a great boxer and he's got a, a lot of adulation around the world. So if I can take away the adulation and, and bring that to myself, I think a lot of people will respect me more. At a news conference announcing the fight, Lewis gave Galata a brief lesson in clean fighting. This is legal. <laughs> This is not legal. Galata's trainer, Lou Duba, took the opportunity to try to show that Andrew had already learned that lesson. Now show, show Lennox Lewis where you're supposed to punch the guy. Just forget this, this part, you know? <laughs>
Though Dubik can't cry about the low blows, he understands how important this fight is and which fighter will most feel the pressure. I think the pressure is going to be on uh, Andrew. I think Andrew that night, if I can put it this way here, is going to fight two guys that night. He's going to fight Lennox Lewis. He's also going to fight uh, Andrew Galata. And he's got to beat both. It's the uh, most important fight in my life. You know, I've, I've been training all my life you know, for, you know, for a fight like that. You know, and it's, uh, it's a chance to, 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 to hit the top of the world. They meet at a critical point in their careers. Two warriors with little in common, except a passion to prove the world wrong. An anonymous champion, craving the adulation he's convinced he deserves. A notorious challenger with a bad habit that could yet be his downfall. Respect versus redemption. What will prevail? Well, as we mentioned, Lou Duba's gotta laugh, can't cry about his fighter's two disqualifications against Riddick Bow for low blows. It became a stock comic element on the press tour which publicized this fight, Duba offering demonstrations of how to guard against it. We've been working on Roger and I on how to get Andrew to keep his blows high rather than keep him low. We don't want, of course, we don't want to send Lennox back to England as a, as a tenor. We want to send him back circling singing bass like he's used to doing, see? So the punches are going to be coming up here. They're going to be hitting him on the chin. They're going to be hitting him in the chest. They're going to be hitting him in the body. They're going to hit him there. Over here, we've taught Andrew to keep away. This is a no zone over here. This is out of, the, out of, out of line. Well, some of that, of course, is for laughs, and some of it they hope will sink in. But Roy Jones, realistically, fighters get into the ring and do what their reflexes tell them to do. Is there any way you can train a bad habit this deeply ingrained out of a fighter like Galata? No, you can't get a bad habit that deeply ingrained out of Galata. The thing Galata has to do is, like Lou said earlier, he has to win the victory against Andrew Galata. That's the first step to getting rid of that bad habit. Once he beats Andrew Galata, then he can rectify the rest of the situations, and he may have a chance of defeating someone to become the world heavyweight champion. And some people bet against the prospect that he can ever do that based on what he did in the last two fights. But Larry Merchant, we've looked back at uh, Andrew Galata's fouls in the two fights against Riddick Bowe, and there are some consistencies in terms of when this happens. Uh, a look now at a montage of these low blows. Now, I studied uh, both of the fights between Bo and Galata. And nine times, Galata was either warned or penalized for fouls. On seven of those occasions, it occurred in the last minute of a round. On five of those seven occasions, it occurred in about the last half minute of the round, which suggests that it was either fatigue and or some kind of hurt and or some kind of frustration in which he really had lost his uh, thinking process. Uh, and part of that credit goes to Bo because he kept putting pressure on him despite all the heavy punches he was taking in what, what certainly in my mind is one of the most brutal fights I've ever seen between heavyweights. And eventually Galata would just crack under that pressure and Bo maintained his poise better. So the question is, do you make him get out of this habit by showing him where the trunk line is? Or in some way, do you help him with the tempo of the fight? Do you help him uh, in training so that he doesn't get tired in the last minutes of these rounds? He has had a habit of sporadically getting tired and taking about every third or fourth round off. It shows in his punch count output. Often he throws 75, 80, 90 punches in a round, but then sometimes he'll come right back and throw 40 in the next round. So obviously this man has a tendency toward fatigue, and as you point out, that's often when the low blows take place. Roy Jones, the average guy on the street, assumes that it's difficult, if not impossible, for Lennox Lewis to go into the ring without worrying about whether he's going to get crunched in the privates. Can, can Lewis completely put that out of his mind? Because surely he doesn't want to be going in there worrying about something a lot of does that's illegal as opposed to focusing on what he does above the belt. Well, he can put it out of his mind, but 
To be honest with you, if I was going to go in and fight an Andrew Gallata and I was a heavyweight with Lennox's status, his height, his uh, style, his power, I would go in and do like Muhammad Ali would have done. I'd go in strictly to move, outbox him, never let him get close enough to land a low blow. If he landed a low blow, he'd have to reach for it. If he reached for that low blow and from out there and I'm moving like I was supposed to be moving, he would never have to worry about reaching for another low blow because that would be the last one he'll remember. But if you go stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe and you know he's going to throw him and you stand there, you let him throw all his punches and you throw yours, then stuff, anything can happen. A lot of times he may not intentionally be doing it because he throws winging punches. If you stand there and trade punches that way, anything can happen. That's why it's supposed to be boxing and not fighting. What they've been doing is taking the lazy way out and fighting instead of boxing. And this is what happens to him because when you do that, anything can happen. And within that dissertation, Roy pointed out the reason for the excitement and the mystique that surrounds this particular heavyweight title bout. Not only the big question of whether the winner here can make a strong enough statement to merit an immediate challenge to the winner of the November 8 heavyweight bout between people's champion Evander Holyfield and challenger Michael Moore, but also, as Roy said, anything can happen. So let's get ready now for the bout that could help to dictate what's going to happen in the future of the heavyweight division. And to do so, we take another look at a set of consensus ratings in the heavyweight division. Once again, as we talk about these with Larry, these represent a consensus of three boxing publications and a little bit of our own input. Yeah, Evander Holyfield is the recognized champion. Lennox Lewis, second, Michael Moore, third, both of them with championship belts. And among the younger fighters, who are forcing their way up to the divisions. Andrew Galata is the best known. Ike Abayabuchi and David Tua are the two most promising fighters who have shown the most so far at, at being able to have the skills to someday fight for a title. And below that group, there are the uh, golden oldies, we'll call them, with George Foreman, Ray Mercer, Tim Witherspoon, Buster Douglas, all of whom have name recognition clout to get big fights, and so they are still factors in the heavyweight division. So what will it be? Supreme excitement because you have the two big heavyweights who tend to hit and get hit, or supreme disgrace because each of the last four fights involving these fighters have been total fiascos, and it could very well happen again. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension of fist and fury, but above that, the bizarre. A journey into a boxing ring where anything can happen. Next stop, the Twilight Zone of Boxing. For your witnessing, a story about Lennox Lewis and Andrew Galata. One man who has never been in charge of his own destiny, another who is self-destructive. Viewer beware, what you are about to see is highly unusual. Lennox Lewis, a fighter in search of respect. Occupation, heavyweight champion by default. Flashback to 1992, Lewis was awarded a belt that Riddick Bowe had thrown in the trash. Lewis wants his belt. After losing to Oliver McCall, he waited two and a half years for a rematch, only to watch a mental breakdown. Well, I've seen some strange things in boxing. That is surely one of the strangest. Next enters Henry Akinwande, who mysteriously forgot how to fight. Another disqualification. Lennox still waits in the darkest corner of the ring, where the breaks would come to others and not to him. Just a walking distance from reality is Mr. Andrew Galata, an angry man who seems to carry on his shoulder a chip the size of Poland's national debt. Yes, he can fight, but some phenomenon forces him to box dirty. In his two disqualifications against Riddick Bowe, we witnessed one riot and countless low blows. Everyone knows you can't go back. Low blows! Or can you? What you're looking at could be the end of a nightmare or just another beginning. Tonight, we may just find out if Lewis deserves to be called champion or if Galata can fight cleanly. Either way, this isn't just a boxing match. It's a one-way ticket to the twilight zone of boxing, boxing, boxing. Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where moments from now, Lennox Lewis will meet Andrew Galata 
in a bout that we can only hope, can only hope, will be free of controversy and full of hard-hitting action. Luis Galata for a heavyweight belt is being brought to you by Caesars Atlantic City. Escape to the Empire. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. And by TBKO, entertainment that really knocks you out. A big crowd filling the inside of the Atlantic City Convention Center. Much of the atmosphere of a European Championship soccer semifinal between Poland and England as fans of Great Britain's Lennox Lewis and Polish-American Andrew Galata mass to root for their fighters in this giant heavyweight confrontation. Two big heavyweights who hit and get hit. And welcome back once again. I'm Jim Lampley. Let's get ready now for the main event between Lennox Lewis and Andrew Galata. Of course, with us as always, boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, what's it going to be for Lennox Lewis? Is it going to be the definitive chance to prove himself that he's been hungering and waiting for for so long or another trip to the Twilight Zone? <laughs> well, since past his prologue, we can't rule that out, certainly. But Lennox Lewis says that his mission as a prize fighter now is to rid the heavyweight division of all of its misfits. Good luck to him. That can take a couple of lifetimes in this sport. Meanwhile, Lou Duva, the co-trainer of Andrew Galata, insists that his fighter will not circumcise the rules. We hope not. And we also hope that he doesn't deliberately butt or throw low blows. And we hope that because Lennox Lewis probably is the heaviest puncher in the heavyweight division and because Andrew Galata may be the most talented fighter in the heavyweight division. That's really what we came to see. You may have already gotten the sense, incidentally, as you get ready to see what we've come to see, that we're vamping a little bit here. We're killing time because of Andrew Galata's late arrival, which has made Andrew late in preparing for the bout. In fact, he started to warm up, which is the common ritual for fighters before a fight like this, only a few minutes ago. And he has already once asked officials here to give him an extra 20 minutes to get ready for the bout. So if you hear the crowd booing in the background, it's because they don't understand what's going on as we stand and talk and fill time and wait for Galata to be ready. We are all on Galata time right now, and Roy is this going to be a psychological advantage for him because Lewis is going to be made to wait too. Yeah, it's going to be a psychological advantage for Galata because he's already setting the pace. He's making the champion wait for him. Yeah. That's something that is not supposed to happen. The champion, however, may be smart enough to come back and do something else to offset this, but that should never happen to a champion before a championship fight. And it adds another layer to what has already been, in my mind, a challenge to Lewis, because Lennox is a supreme egotist. His life is entirely about him, and he's had to put up with a press tour to publicize this fight, which is, as you say, for his title, where almost all of the attention has been paid to Galata and the possibility of him fouling himself out again or fulfilling his vast potential. The bad boys get the recognition. But <laughs> if I were Lennox Lewis, you know what I would do, right? When Galata came in the arena... I want to hear you say it. I would have exited the you arena. You would have exited the arena. Yeah, he, I'm not going to wait on him and I'm the champion. He's not going to play these psychological games to get the advantage on me. I'm going to play his game, I'm going to win his game, and I'm going to win my game. All right, well, let's talk about what's going to happen in the fight. And we've focused, as have most of the media leading up to the fight, on the question of whether Galata can fight a clean fight or whether he's going to foul out. Let's settle that if for a second. Let's go ahead with the hypothesis that he can fight a clean fight that he's not going to foul himself out with low blows. Given that, what do you see happening? If he goes in and fights the way Lou Duper has instilled in him to fight, he could easily outbox Lennox because Lennox has lately been look, coming in looking for the big punch. He's trying to knock everybody out with one punch. He's not putting combinations together like he used to do. He's not doing the things that made Lennox Lewis who he is today. So if he comes out and Galata fights clean and shows the heart, the will, the self-discipline, and the determination to win this fight, this is an easy fight for, for Galata to win. He's not a big puncher. He's mediocre, but he stays mediocre the whole time. He's in control. He has good body discipline, but he just has to get that inner self-discipline. If he can have that tonight, he can win the heavyweight crown. Incidentally, uh, to a limited degree, shades of July 11, 1996, the riot which followed Bo Galata won. Many of you may have been aware almost an hour ago of this fight 
in the arena. It took place in the upper level, and uh, if we are judging from the colors on the T-shirt of the gentleman on the left, and it probably involved some fans of Andrew Galata, and maybe, in fact, both of them were Galata fans because both of them seem to have some red and white on, but because of that fight that broke out in that section of the upper grandstand, officials here have determined that Lennox Lewis is going to be redirected on his route to the ring from his dressing room. He's going to walk a different path than he would previously have walked so that they can keep him away from that particular rowdy area and hope that there aren't going to be any more disturbances as the evening goes on. Good one walking to Tale of the tape now for Lennox Lewis and Andrew Galata. And you can see that Galata is three years the younger at age 29. Lewis has a one-inch height advantage. They both weighed in at 244 pounds. Quite a coincidence and causing many observers to say, gee, when's the last time in a big heavyweight championship fight that the two fighters both weighed in at the same weight? And you have to go all the way back to June 28 of this year when both Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield weighed 218 pounds in Las Vegas. Reach a two-inch advantage for Galata, who has, by acclamation, the better jab. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here you see, here you see the average number of punches they throw. Galata is more of an action fighter than Lewis has been in the past, although Lewis promises to take the fight to Galata tonight. And you've heard of lies, damn lies, and statistics. Well, here's an example because Lewis is, doesn't throw the kind of jab that Galata does. Galata has a jolting jab, perhaps the best jab we've seen in the heavyweight division since Larry Holmes. Lewis generally paused with his jab. Rules of the bout with our ringside judge, Harold Letterman. The Lennox Lewis, Andrew Galata fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And before a crowd of 15,500, largest ever to witness a Lennox Lewis title defense in the USA, here comes Galata. Under the microscope because of his dirty tactics like a virus and, and to his credit he's handled it pretty well with patience some grace and some humor 293 days without fighting he was scheduled to fight Ray Mercer earlier this year the fight was postponed first because of a back injury to Galata and then eventually canceled because of a neck injury to Mercer so it's not because of Galata's desire or chosen path that he's been out of the ring for nearly 300 days you're right Jim this does evoke the kind of passion we've seen soccer matches all over the world. And it's kind of an amazing, amazing really that here in America, two foreign heavyweights have filled an arena like this and have created the stir that they have. Sport is turning international. You can see fans who are able to reach over and make contact with Galata and the men around him. Obviously, this is not an easy place to secure the fighters as they make their way into the ring, and that's one of the reasons why they've already determined that Lennox Lewis, because of disturbances in the crowd, must take a different path to the ring than the one originally planned for him.
record for Andrew Galata, 28 consecutive wins prior to his two disqualification losses against Riddick Bowe, 25 KOs. This is his first appearance in a heavyweight title fight. You think he's going to hit below a championship belt now? Fighters' records tonight are being brought to you by The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. to you by Main Events and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you, along with Panix Promotions and Ziggy Promotions. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner, Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman, Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz, Deputy Commissioner John Greco, Chief Inspector at ringside, Sylvester Kyler, the physicians in attendance at ringside, Dr. Richard Snepper, Dr. Howard Taylor, Dr. Kenneth Remsen, Dr. Eric Wormser, and Dr. Earl Shaw. The timekeeper at the bell is Arthur Spell, and counting for the knockdown seconds, your alternate referee, Eddie Cotton. This bell is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. WBC supervisor at ringside, John Kofi. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Marty Dinkin, Chuck Hassett, and Barbara Perez. And when the bell rings, working for the 97th time in a world title bout, referee Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. From the boardwalk home of champions, Caesars, Atlantic City. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, 
fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with red, and weighing in at 244 pounds. In his professional career, he has registered 25 knockouts in his 28 victories, and he has suffered two losses by disqualification. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of the Windy City, Chicago, a native son of Warsaw, Poland, here is the pride of Poland. Introducing the challenger, Andrew Kolata. And across the ring in the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with white, and weighing in also at 244 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold. And now, as a professional, in 32 bouts, he has 31 victories with only one defeat. And he has scored 25 knockouts. From East London, England, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the pride of Great Britain, the two-time world heavyweight champion and reigning WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want good sportsmanlike conduct, obey my commands at all times. I want a clean fight from both of you. Understood? You understood, Andrew? Lennox? Okay, touch him up. Can the foul pole become a fair pole and become a force in the heavyweight division? Can the true grit show true grit? <laughs> and get the respect that he craves. The stare down was good. The stare down was real. They know each other pretty well by now, Roy. They had one of those lengthy press tours. They've spent day after day with each other. And it's a cliche, of course, but I don't think they particularly like each other. I don't think so either. Well, one has what the other one wants. And the other one wants it badly. Who will land the first heavy punch between these two power punchers? Lewis starting off with a jab. Emmanuel Stewart claiming his fighter's jab is quicker and better than ever before. Galata a little bit more tentative at the outset than he appeared to be against Riddick Bowe. Lewis lands a right hand over the top. in the corner and Galata lets him stand. And they spin back out into center ring. Right hand over the top by Lewis. Galata momentarily stunned. Left hook by Lewis. Galata goes down. Only the second time in his career that Andrew Galata has been down and he is extremely wobbly as he gets up. Lewis has a tremendous right, opportunity for a first right, round knockout here. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I hope that the line is ready. This is over. This fight is over. The referee just stopped it already. Cortez gave the line a lot of time, but he has absolutely nothing as the Lewis pounds him to the canvas again. He won't make That's it. That's it. That's it. Tremendous over. statement by Lennox Lewis. A big statement. Tremendous statement. He's been waiting for years, and it finally happens. Andrew Galata had been warned by his camp that Lewis would come out quickly, but he still looked a little bit tentative to start out, as though he he, he couldn't find yet the the equation to land that good jab of his, and he let Lewis take the initiative, and Lewis, who we said earlier, is the biggest puncher in the heavyweight division, showed what we meant 
against this 244-pound giant. I don't think Galata ever recovered from the first big right hand that Lewis landed. No, I don't think he did either. When Lewis lands, get, get time to land that big right hand, it usually means trouble. When he hit Galata, Galata was not ready for it, and it took a bad effect on him. And remember that Lewis had been saying all along, he didn't want to give Galata a chance to land low blows, and the way to do that was to get to him early and hurt him early. There's nothing more definitive than what we just saw. It's certainly the most definitive, defining knockout in the heavyweight division since Mike Tyson was a young and dominant fighter. Since June of 1988, when Tyson here knocked out Michael Spinks in 91 seconds, that's the last time you saw this definitive a statement in the heavyweight division. This was similar to what Roy Jones did to Montel Griffin. And, and Roy, you can identify with, with when it wells up in you over and over for years. You want this. Lennox wanted it so badly, and he got it. Yes, he did, and it's very good to see Lennox back like this. Here's the first overhand right. And Galato was hurt from that, and then the left hook. And Emmanuel Stewart has been saying all along, hey, don't focus only on my fighter's right hand. That left hook is pretty heavy, too. First knockdown coming here. And Galata just with no defense against Lewis's power shots. Yeah, but you also see Lewis putting shots together here, like I said earlier, that he stopped doing. He throws the one-two, came back with another one-two, and came back with even another one-two. That's how Lewis Lewis got to be what Lewis Lewis was. You know, no fighter in the heavyweight division has had more criticism heaped on him by reporters, particularly American reporters, in the past several years than Lennox Lewis. But through it all, not too many guys wanted to fight him. Not too many guys were stepping up and saying, well, let me have a shot at Lennox Lewis. No. And here's the reason why. Yeah, they, because they knew the talent that Lennox possessed. It's just that he was hurt badly by the mishap on the Riddick Bowe situation. When he, didn't, when he didn't get a chance to prove himself against Riddick Bowe, that hurt Lennox Lewis. And every American critic presumed that Riddick Bowe was the better fighter than Lennox Lewis, but Galata's whole reputation was based on his two trips with Bowe, and off of this you have to say, well, how much was that? How good was Bowe? Well, that goes to show you. And I don't think it was that Bowe was bad either. It's just that Bowe really didn't take this fight serious because he too cheated himself when he didn't fight Lennox Lewis when the fight was at prime time. Another look at the intense first round destruction of Andrew Galata by the thunderous punches of Lennox Lewis. And that usually means that a guy is back. Well, there's a statement. If you were wondering if the winner of tonight's fight could make a definitive statement that would put him in line as the obvious public challenger to the winner of Holyfield Moore. There it was. Here's Ladies Michael Buffer. Gentlemen, the end comes at 1 minute 35 seconds of the very first round. Referee Joe Cortez calls the fight to an end. The winner and still WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain. It was the sixth quickest knockout ever in a heavyweight title fight. It was everything Lennox Lewis might have dreamed it could be and more. It was total destruction forget, of Galata and his right mystique. Here Atlantic City by way of and here's Atlantic another look City. at the full oh, first Ohio, round in real Ohio. speed. And Galata started off tentatively, Roy, and just never really got into it. No, because he came here not prepared. He got here late. His whole night started just like he started. He started out late. He came in unready. He wasn't prepared like he wanted to be. And it shows right here. He's cold. He has no clue of really what's about to happen because he's not prepared. That left hook by Lewis driving Galata back just a little bit. Galata not even able to land his vaunted jab in the early going. That right hand drove him back. And that was a prelude of things to come. Yeah, and sometimes it shows that he may have not have been as serious as was Lennox Lewis. 
And it's so strange because in my fight with Montel Griffin, the second fight, Montel said the same thing. He said he didn't get a chance to warm up. You should have been ready five months ago. You knew we were coming to this. This is professional boxing. You're supposed to be warmed up when you get to the ring, and it's your responsibility. That excuse won't work for what happened to Galata tonight. What happened to Galata tonight was legitimate Lennox Lewis thunder, and it showed on Andrew's face right there. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And here, I think the referee really gave him more time than he's supposed to have to get himself back together. But I guess he wanted the fans to really see a good fight. You yeah, know? Cortez all but gave Galata an obvious excess of time, but it didn't matter to Lewis. He mixed in a body shot in the closing garage. In my opinion, I think Lennox Lewis is back. Well, as you look down the road toward a possible matchup, between Lewis and the winner of Holyfield and Moorer, you now have to ask the question, did Lennox look too good? Well, I don't think he looked too good, but let me tell you what I had, what I thought that happened to Lennox Lewis. When Riddick Bowe was at prime time to fight Lennox Lewis, he was denied that opportunity to prove that he thought, or to prove what he really thought of himself. He was denied the right to prove that he was the best heavyweight champion, if and so he was. So, that took all the esteem out of him. He had no self-motivation. He lost his esteem. He lost his will to train, to get up and run every morning. And that's how people like Oliver McCall get lucky and get on the scene. This happened because strictly political reasons in boxing. The reasons that people won't allow fighters to come together. Let's hope that politics don't stand between uh, Lennox Lewis and another chance to define himself within the division. Let's go to the ring and Larry Merchant. Thank you, Jim, and congratulations, Lennox. How do you feel after finally making such a dramatic statement, that the, the kind of statement that people want to see in a heavyweight champion? Well, basically, you know, I just wanted to go out there and make my statement to the world because I want to prove that I'm the best heavyweight on the planet. And I want to consolidate all the, all the belts together and take, keep them for myself. Have you been turned from, I don't know, a big pussycat into a big tiger? Well, I told Galata, welcomes to the lion's den and you know you could say the people are woke and asleep in lion and that was me i just wanted to go in there and prove my point i wanted to go in there and get rid of him like i said i wanted to get rid of all the misfits in the heavyweight uh, division right now and uh you know galata was the last person on my list and i basically wanted to go out there and hit him before he could uh, commit any fouls in there once i had him hurt just take him out did he look tentative or frozen to you when it started out or uh, waiting to see what might develop and you just got to him before he could figure anything out? Well, you know, I just I, I knew what my game plan was going in there. I just wanted to go in there and prove my point and not really worry about him. Everybody was making a big statement about the low blows and him being dirty. I didn't want to give him no chance to do anything, uh, anything dirty. Just going to go in there and do my job. Go in there and hit him. Emmanuel Stewart said I'm an accurate puncher, so I just wanted to go in there and prove that I'm an accurate puncher. Once I hit him, you know, I knew he was begun. All right, we want to take a look at what happened in the ring again and have you describe to us, uh, Lennox, what you saw early on and how you imposed yourself on Galata. Basically, you know, I realized that he was a bit tentative, you know, with his punches. He was basically waiting for me to uh, do my thing. but. God has never seen nothing like me. He's never seen my kind of speed, my kind of accuracy, especially my kind of punching power. Once he got hit, you know, you see what happens after one punch. You know, he basically reacted in a negative way and he was hurt. When he got up again, wobbly, you knew it was the end, didn't you? I knew it was the end because I thought the referee, uh, you know, took a long while with the count. But uh, I wanted to take my time and I was very intense. <laughs> All right, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Stewart, you've, you've been preaching to this uh, lion for several years since you've begun to train him that he had the kind of ability to do this rather than to be a counterpuncher. Has he finally achieved what your dream was for him as well as what his dream was for himself? Yes, I'm very happy. I've always said from the day that I first saw Lennox, he was the best heavyweight that I'd ever saw. And that's why I was excited when I got involved with him. But he's a puncher first. And the, the thing that amazed me about him, he's going back to his old days when he really was an aggressive person in the streets. No uh, but, but the thing about his accuracy is so much that if he punches, his volume goes up, his knockouts are going to because he's a very accurate puncher. All uh, right, Lennox, what are you hoping for next? 
like I said, to uh, consolidate all the all the cha all the championship belts. Uh, Lennox Lewis is still on a mission. I want to become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and that's my goal. Thank you very much, and again, congratulations for a very convincing go, victory, Jim. Final punch stat numbers are uh, almost meaningless in the wake of an onslaught like that. Lewis landing 30 of 36 punches, 83%, 21 of 24 power shots. You don't have much chance to stand up to that, even if you're Andrew Galata. Two of 10 for Galata. Let's look ahead just for a moment to the possibility of Lewis against Evander Holyfield or Michael Moore. Holyfield, terrific fighter, terrific athlete. But realistically, Lewis is going to outweigh him by 25 or 30 pounds. How would Holyfield stand up to that? Neither one of those guys don't want to see this Lennox Lewis. Now, if this Lennox Lewis can stay on the scene, there's no even no chance of even thinking about it. But Holyfield has the heart, don't get me wrong, but it's just it's such a big disadvantage for him to deal with this weight. That's the same problem he had against Riddick Bowe, except that Lennox Lewis is a much more mobile opponent, and he's going to be very difficult for Holyfield to deal with if he comes like he came tonight. And maybe a heavier one one-shot puncher and and as for Moorer qualified technician the southpaw presents an interesting challenge but he's got a questionable chin no he doesn't have a chance with Lennox Lewis he's not big enough he can't take the punch George already showed that he's a good fighter he has a lot of heart he go in there and try he do his best but I don't see him truly beating this Lennox Lewis now if the other Lennox Lewis show up he may beat all right let's see which Andrew Galata is with Larry Merchant as we go back up to the ring all right thank you again Jim Andrew uh, you came late, you delayed coming into the ring. Were you cold in there? Did, were you not fully prepared for the start of the fight? I don't know what, what happened, you know, I just got caught, you know, it's hard to, hard to understand to me that, you know, why, 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 why did it happen, you know, and what can I do? Accident. You never had a chance to use your, your jab convincingly to do anything. Was he just uh, too strong and too accurate with his punches? A little bit too, too pressure, I guess. Too, too nervous, you know. And you say you, happen, you, know? you say that you were a little nervous because of the pressure. In some ways, did all the talk of the low blows in, inhibit you, uh, um, make you less aggressive than you would ordinarily be? It's a lot of things, you know happened you know in the past you know so I got to the no disqualification everybody told not, not talk about it you know and uh, a little bit too much you know but what can I do you know I just I can't just you know make guilt anybody else around you know because I love the fight you know so you're saying just, that that there was so much talk about the disqualifications that that added to the pressure of fighting for a title for the first time is that would that be an accurate a reflection of what you said yes you know people don't, 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 don't believe that they're not able to fight for the title you know, and just happened just accident you know no 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 happened and I'm I'm sorry Lou you know you spent so much time with me you know and you Roger you know thank you no no no, no thank you both of you you know for no for no for a for no for a for a for a great 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 but what can I do? Sorry. Thank you very much, Andrew. Jim? I'm not really sure he knows what hit him. No, he doesn't. He's not aware of what even went on tonight, I don't think. Still want to be a heavyweight? Who, me? Yeah. You know, I'll do a little bit of anything. I'm <laughs> not afraid of nobody, and I don't think that they scared me or nothing tonight. It's just that, you know, I'll do what I can. I'm not a fool. I know what I'm doing. I'm a smart fighter. I take chances. You never know what you can do. With God on your side, anything is possible. So don't count your band out so quick either with Lenny Fluor. No, but there are big heavyweights and there are smaller heavyweights, and yeah, this is a big heavyweight. Yeah, he's a big heavyweight. I never really looked to fight a big heavyweight unless they paid me right now, and that would be something different. But oh, and they'll, they'll pay you a bunch. That chance. No, I, I, I like doing what I'm doing. I'm enjoying myself. You know, I do what comes up, what's best for Roy. You know what I'm saying? And we'll watch for uh, more of that and uh, look forward to it. Thanks All right. very I'm much. Thank God. Thing. You know All how right. that goes. Larry Merchant, your final thoughts on uh, Lennox Lewis's crowning moment of glory. Well, first, Andrew Galata came late and left early. <laughs> <laughs> That's the headline on this fight. But I think that I'm pleased to see that Lennox Lewis has got some vindication because he's been an honorable fighter. I believe that 
uh, because he was a foreign fighter, he never got his just due here. Imagine a, a man who's won a silver and gold medals in the Olympics, lost one fight or eight or in eight or nine years. It's true, he hasn't often displayed such a crowd-pleasing style, more often a crowd-displeasing style. I think if he had been an American, he'd have gotten more benefits of the doubts. And I think the way he went about it tonight, erased all of those doubts and uh, moved the heavyweight division uh, back into the spotlight and the sunlight. And now it's up to uh, Evander Holyfield and Michael Moore to do their part, and hopefully we'll see a unification fight next year. Indeed, well said. This was step one, and Lennox Lewis has made his statement. Now we wait for November 8, Las Vegas, Evander Holyfield defending the People's Heavyweight Championship against Michael Moore. And will the winner of that fight be willing to step up and give Lennox Lewis the opportunity that off of tonight's action he so richly deserves? We'll wait and see. So once again, in case you somehow joined this late, Lennox Lewis retains his version of the heavyweight championship with by far the most spectacular performance of his career. His first first round knockout since way back in his 10th professional fight, he destroyed Andrew Galata in a minute and 35. Lewis Galata has been brought to you by Caesars Atlantic City, Escape to the Empire, by TVKO, entertainment that really knocks you out by Budweiser Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste, and by International Boxing Digest, the class of boxing magazines. DBKO returns in December with Oscar De La Hoya defending his welterweight crown against Wilfredo Rivera. Rivera, considered an awkward fighter, but a formidable opponent in his two relatively close losses against Fernell Whitaker. So now for Larry Merchant, Roy Jones, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from the Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The executive producer of DVKO is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's broadcast was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. Associate directors were David Hoffman, David Leitzen, and Kendall Reed. Assistant to the producer, Thomas Erdelfels. Production manager was John McKelly, and the technical supervisor, Bob Hunter.